afternoon's event. Uh, before we begin, I want to make sure that we um, say a special thank you to St. Louis Park's own Hannah Greenstein, our cellist for the evening. Thanks for, be thanks for being with us, Hannah. Um, I'd like for you to turn your attention to the screens at this time. Welcome to the Roland and Doris Larson Caring Youth Recognition Event. My name is Ian McConnell and I'm a graduate of St. Louis Park High School and was recognized as a caring youth myself in 2000 and 2004. It's a long time ago. The Caring Youth Recognition is one that has been going on for nearly three decades now. Well, it goes back to about 19, um, uh, that would be 1989. When Doris and I used to talk about what we were doing and some of the things we could uh, kind of ideas to play with, and one of the ideas that kind of persisted with us was that um, there are lots of young people. I was working in schools in that at that yeah. time and before that, but a lot of kids in school who were doing some wonderful things and they weren't being recognized anyway. And so we kind of picked up on that idea and said, wouldn't it be fun to create a program where we would honor those kids? We would have to identify them in some way, and then we would honor them with an award. And so we talked about that and decided, why not have a thing called the Caring Youth Award? Right away we got going and we started it in our church and Beth Johnson was in our church. Yeah. And Beth Johnson became a key person. She was something. When she saw the program operating in the church, she said, we got to do this citywide. Yeah. This is so good, you know. Right away, the program went citywide in 1990. And I just want to bring uh, Doris into this too. She wishes she could have been yeah. here today. She couldn't be here today. but. Um, She's so much into this program yeah, too, and she was a part a of inventing it. Yep. And together we just have had a lot of fun doing that. This event is specifically geared to recognize and honor you, young people, who care in an uncommon and really cool way for other people and for your community. Many of you, I'm sure, are gifted athletes or academics. Many of you are student leaders in a variety of different ways, and all those are really great, but that's not what this event is about. The Caring Youth Recognition is what it sounds like. It's all about recognizing you for being who you are. You are young people who are, who are wired up in a particular way to care about others and care for others, and that's a really important gift that you have. And so, adults here in St. Louis Park have seen you, and we want to up, uh, hold you up and, and recognize you for being the kind of people you are. Your teachers, your religious leaders, your elected officials, your parents, your neighbors, adults in this community see who you are, and we want to celebrate you. We're living in a time when kindness and compassion and caring aren't always characteristics that are the most celebrated and upheld. And so, maybe this is the perfect time to set aside an evening to hear stories about the ways that young people in this community of St. Louis Park care for each other and for this community. So welcome to the Roland and Doris Larson Caring Youth Recognition. maybe a little hard to hear. Thanks for hanging in. <laughs> Welcome to the 30th annual Roland and Doris Larson Caring Youth Recognition Night. I'm Danica Olson and I'm so glad that each of you are here. Tonight, we joyfully recognize the good things youth are doing in the world. 
we're delighted to have an occasion to come together and celebrate young people, the young people of St. Louis Park. Tonight, each of you is being appreciated for your character, your caring, and for your innate gifts. It's my privilege to put this event together, not because I, uh, not be just because I love to celebrate youth's uh, amazing gifts, uh, but also because I count Raleigh and Doris among my friends. I met Raleigh and Doris about 10 years ago when I began my work at Westwood. The kindness and generosity of these two amazing people is unmatched. This night is dedicated and is in memory of two people who are unlike any other compassionate cheerleaders I know. I don't like to speak for anyone, but I'm pretty confident that I could, say, I could speak for everyone who had the honor of knowing Raleigh and Doris, that after time with each of them, each person felt special, like they truly mattered. In a fast-paced world, to feel genuinely heard and celebrated is a rarity. They've since passed and are dearly missed by, though, uh, by many, though their legacy of caring and compassion and also generosity live on in many. We have the honor of having Raleigh and Doris's daughter Jane and her husband Mike joining us tonight. Would you stand? Thank you for your ongoing support of this event and for the love and care that you each share with the world. Another Larson family member is joining us tonight is Raleigh and Doris's wonderful granddaughter, Michelle. You'll meet her in a minute, but I'd like to share a bit about Michelle before she joins us on the stage. She'll be introducing tonight's speakers. Joy is the first and most important word that comes to mind when I think about Michelle. Her life is filled with it. Her personality and demeanor radi radiate it. And in fact, her whole life is built on it. The relationship with her grandparents was so special. Michelle is a big believer in following the things in life that bring you joy. In her work as a life coach, she helps people identify what brings them joy and then figure out a plan to get more of that in their life. In addition to being a coach, Michelle is a lover of life, a lover of classic rock concerts from the front row, and lives each day spreading joy to others. It's been an honor to get to know Michelle and a greater honor to have her introducing some other special people here with us tonight. Please join me in welcoming Michelle Stimson to the stage. Wow, thank you, Danica. So as Danica mentioned, that I'm here with my aunt and uncle, Jane and Mike, and the three of us are absolutely thrilled to be here. So on behalf of all of us in the Larson family, thank you for your presence tonight. A big thank you to Danica for so graciously stepping in and stepping up to coordinate this very important event. Raleigh and Doris were huge fans of yours, and you've been a dear friend to them, and they adored you. So your enthusiasm and your leadership, Danica, is an incredible gift to our community, and we simply couldn't do this event without you. Thank you. So please help me to acknowledge Danica for inviting us all to come together tonight. I can't think of a more perfect person to kick off our evening, Richard Leiter. Why do you get up in the morning? Well, Richard is the founder of InVenture, the purpose company, where the mission is to help us answer that all-important question of why we get up. He's known as a global thought leader of the purpose movement, and you might have even seen his special on PBS called The Power of Purpose, which was actually viewed by millions of people. Richard has done so many amazing things in the world, including writing 10 books and speaking on five continents. But because we're here tonight to honor and celebrate people for who they are, 
versus what they do. I'd like to tell you who Richard is and why we're so grateful and honored to have him here. My grandpa Roland had a long history with Richard and that dates back to the early 1970s. And ever since those early days, my grandpa called Richard a friend, a colleague, and a mentor. I remember growing up that I would always hear about this cool guy Richard and what he was up to. And I always keenly observed the deep respect and admiration that my grandpa so clearly had for him. My grandparents were so moved by all the ways that young people were doing good in the world. And in the late 80s, they started talking about how they could honor these kids. My grandpa said that he always liked to check out ideas with his buddy Richard. So naturally, he shared this idea with him too. But, he told Richard, he wanted to wait a year or so so he could raise some money and get some more good ideas before officially launching a caring youth program. So Richard's response, why don't you do it right away? I want to give the first gift to the program. So my grandpa told the story of how Richard gave a substantial gift to start caring youth, which empowered my grandparents with the fuel and the support that they needed right away. And the rest is history. So not only does Richard know a good idea when he hears one, but he's a true champion of supporting and rallying others to shine their light in the world. And here we are now 30 years later with over 530 young people already honored and recognized and another 14 on deck tonight. Richard, thank you. We're truly honored to have you here. So please welcome our dear friend, Richard Leiter. Thank you, Michelle, and good evening, everybody. It's really a privilege to be here. I did meet Raleigh back when, <clears throat> 1971, when dinosaurs roamed the earth still. And uh, we've known each other a long time, and we were actually, <clears throat> we would call each other menterns. You know what a mentern is? It's a mentor and an intern. So a mentor to others and an intern, meaning a learner from others. So I think most of us in the room can probably suggest with young and it's an ageless age agnostic to be a mentor and means to be a mentor and a learner at, at the same time and that's what i really <clears throat> feel that was our relationship so i want to share a, a a few brief ideas before we honor people uh, this evening and uh, i call it the purpose path or the path to purpose and i've been studying the power of purpose now for four decades and looking at this whole business of why do you get up in the morning? And it may seem to some people as a luxury to think about that, but what we know is this. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. You have a reason for being here. And if you have a reason to get up in the morning, it is fundamental to your health, to your healing, to your happiness, and ultimately even to your longevity, to your, to your length of life. And so it's very practical, and I think the Caring Youth Program and the Larsons embodied what I would call the, the, the power of purpose or the having a clear uh, reason to, uh, to get up in the morning. I have a colleague. Uh, how many of you have cell phones? Anybody here doesn't have one? Uh, I have a colleague who is programmed to cell phone. And when it rings and then it goes to the answering machine, it says, at the sound of the tone, please leave your answer to life's two eternal questions. Who are you and what do you want? <laughs> very, very clever. So who are you and what do you want? I think we all want lives that matter as human beings. And the caring youth recognition and, and caring and purpose is about mattering. Mattering matters at all, all uh, st stages uh, of our lives. Raleigh embodied that. In fact, Raleigh used to have a bumper sticker on his car. And maybe you still have some of those bumper stickers left. But it said on the back of his car, listen to someone today. And that's pretty much what I would say was the mantra uh, for his and Doris's life. And they were. If I ever needed to think something through or I had a challenge, first person really, literally was Raleigh because I knew that he cared deeply enough 
to not fix me, but to get me, to get what I was really uh, about as, as a person. So his legacy really is a legacy of, of listening in, ma in uh, many ways. So I want to give you just a brief test uh, right now because uh, really what I think caring is all about and the caring youth recognition is all about gifts. And Michelle um, mentioned this, Danica mentioned the word gifts. What are these things we call gifts? Well, Raleigh met and uh, I uh, worked with a man uh, in the past named uh, uh, Richard Bowles. Richard Bowles wrote a book. I don't know if you've heard of this book before. It's called What Color Is Your Parachute? Sold 10 million copies around the world and it was really about discerning your gifts in, in many ways and finding ways to bring those out in the world. And, and uh, he died in, in his early 90s a couple of years uh, back. But uh, Richard Bowles wrote a foreword for one of my books. I wrote One of the books I wrote is called Something to Live For. And he wrote the forward for that book and the forward was called The Gifts We Love. And uh, uh, here's what the forward was all about and why I share it with, with you tonight. He was an Episcopal priest and he was fired from his job as an Episcopal priest. And he was traveling around the country trying to figure out what do people do in the next phase of their life if they're not Episcopal priests. Well, we're all going to be in our in transitions in our life at some, some point or another where we have to ask the bigger, uh, bigger questions. And so the forward went something like this. Being an Episcopal priest, he said this. He said, I had this dream before I was born that I had a conversation with God. And I told God that I wanted to go to earth. And being a loving God, God said, well, what do you want to do when you go to earth? And I, this is Richard Bowles writing and speaking. He said, I don't really know. And so God said, I'm going to give you some gifts. And those gifts are yours to share when you go to earth. And that will help you to discern what you should do. And during this dream then, he had this long dream and this conversation with God. And he woke up. And he had amnesia. He couldn't remember the gifts. And he wrote in this forward from my book, The Gifts We Love, he said, you know, we all have amnesia. We're all born with gifts, but we have to discover those gifts while we're here. And we have to figure out from a loving God what to do with those gifts and how to express the, those gifts. And so I hear so many people say, oh, gifts, I don't have those. Or so. Every single human being I've worked with over the decades has gifts. So I want you to just either jot down or think of one gift that you have. And here are the characteristics of a gift. Because caring is not just caring, it's bringing our gifts to the caring relationship, whatever those gifts are. Everybody in this room has those gifts. So a gift is something, number one, you love to do. Not something you just paid to do or you have to do. It's something that your hand turns to naturally. Think of that. The second characteristic of a gift is that it's something that others observe you doing superbly and well. Somehow they may even comment, affirm you for that in, in certain ways. And um, so they, oftentimes they observe those gifts in you. Why? Because they don't have them themselves. And therefore they see that you have them and they honor those even though you may not. Third thing is a big one really big thing and that is gifts are often things that we can't recall learning I don't know I've just been doing this naturally and effortlessly my whole life how many of you have brothers and sisters not everybody but most are your brothers and sisters gifts the same as yours when did you know start to notice that they were different <laughs> early on they may even bugged you or they may be something that you affirmed or or whatever and so oftentimes uh, we can't recall learning. And the four things we love, learning more about it. And so a gift is something that comes to us naturally. So I, I'm going to push the pause button here before I pull a few ideas together to, to pull it together here. But I want you just to, to, to take 30 seconds or less and turn to the person next to you and say, one of my gifts that I really love giving is blank. This is no time to be shy. This is a time to stand and take a stand that God gave you this gift and this is one that you can own. 
So just turn to the person next to you and either say, I don't have a clue what this guy's talking about, do you? Or I totally get what he's talking about and one of my gifts is blank. So 30 seconds, person next to you. Okay, thank your partner. So if you use your, there's a little formula here to discern your calling, really. And that is gifts plus passions plus values equals your calling, equals your caring in many ways. If you get up in the morning and you use your gifts, on something that you feel passionate about or called to do in an environment, maybe a tough environment, but an environment where you feel like you have a voice in matters. Now you've got a calling. Calling is that inner urge to give that gifts away. And that inner urge, I believe, is at the core of what caring is really all about. Compassion is at the core of caring and, and, and of calling in, in uh, many ways. I used to teach all the time with Stephen Covey, who wrote the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen died about uh, six years ago in a an un very unfortunate bicycling accident where he spun out and hit his head and died. And before he died, though, he had written a, a book and he called it The Eighth Habit, even though The Seven Habits was this highly sought after book. The Eighth Habit was what we're here talking about right now. And that was finding your voice and helping others do the same. Caring enough to bring your gifts to the world and helping others uh, do the same in, in uh, many ways. I grew up, I'm a homeboy, I grew up in St. Paul uh, and I went to St. Paul Central High School and uh, I, was, I got an award from St. Paul Central High School <clears throat> about a decade ago and uh, when they called I was sure they had the wrong number. Because when I was in high school, I, I, you know, I, I was uh, not memorable. And I, the award the year before was given to Dave Winfield, the athlete from the Yankees. <laughs> and the next year was given to Richard Schulz, the founder of Best Buy. <laughs> and then me. And I said, why? And they said, we want kind of a normal person who doesn't, isn't a billionaire and a famous athlete <laughs> who does, gets up and is a working stiff and goes to work every day and, you know, cranks out. And uh, so uh, I was honored to get this, but you have to give a talk. And uh, you have to give a five minute or less talk to the student body and the teachers and, um, uh, and the press is, is actually there. So I got up and, uh, uh, to give my talk and uh, my wife who taught in the public schools for three decades was sitting in the front row. I looked at the audience and I, and I said, um, my speech is only four words long, so I want you to listen. My wife kind of went, oh, geez. you know, it's like, what is this all about? And so I said, I want you to listen. Here was my four word speech. There was this person. I stopped and I said, you know what I'm talking about? I said, there was this person who really cared enough to step up and helped me during, when I was in high school during a time when things were not easy for me, tough for me. And this was a caring teacher in this, and her name was Miss Hart. And she was in room 308 in Central High School. I can't remember a lot of the other teachers, but Miss Hart, I remember because she actually listened. And she, like Raleigh and Doris, cared enough to step in there and be present with me and in this, this time. And so I said, for all of you in this room,
there was somebody you could call a fortuitous encounter. That's your word to look up tonight, fortuitous. But it means an unexpected encounter where you didn't expect that you would cross paths with somebody and it would make all the difference in the world. And uh, so uh, I want to dedicate this talk to Miss Hart. And I said, but before I sit down, I'm now still at the three minute mark of my five minute talk in front of the student body. I want you to turn to the person next to you and I want you to say to that person who, and these are all kids who are, are young people who are there not expecting any work to be done, you know, et cetera. I, said, I, I think just turn to the person next to you and, and tell them who is that person for you other than your parent or your grandparent or somebody who allegedly was kind of a shoe in who stepped into your life along the way? And I gave them 30 seconds and the place it just erupted. So I, the last thing I want to do, and then I'll close off here, is to go back to that same person you just talked to and say, for you, who was, there was this person. Who was that person for you? Just turn to that person next to you who made all the difference in the world at a time in your life where you really needed caring. So just turn to the person and just suggest who that might be. Okay. So during that talk, when I ended, I sat down, much to the surprise of the teachers, to a standing ovation from these students. My wife said it was because the talk was only three minutes long, but the, uh, <laughs> but the point is, I think we all know it when we sense it. You can't always see it, but we know when someone really cares enough to step in there. There are 1,441 purpose moments every single day. 1,441 opportunities, moments in a day, to stand in and make a difference in someone's life. To just listen, give a kind word, give a hug, uh, whatever it, it, it might be at, at the time. So as a student of purpose, I want to leave you with one quick exercise to think about maybe doing. Uh, by the way, I love writing books, I love reading books, I love going in bookstores. And I was in a bookstore not too long ago and uh, I walked into um, you know, uh, the information desk and I asked the lady at the information, uh, the information desk, I said, can you tell me where the self-help section is? And she said, well, if I tell you, won't that defeat the whole purpose? <laughs> 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 well. Caring is not about self-help, it's about self-realization. It's about authentically bringing who you are to what you do from cradle to grave. Youth is a great place to, to honor it, but we need to honor it from cradle to grave in many ways. So here's the exercise to do. What I've discovered is that there's a universal purpose that we all have. You could walk out of here and say, oh, I don't have a purpose, you know, or it's a, it's a luxury. It's not a luxury. It is a fundamental, as I said, to health healing. But here is a default purpose. Two words, grow and give. If you give, get up every day with the intention to grow and give, you will know what, it, what Raleigh and Doris stood for. You will know what the caring youth process, I think, is, is all about. So what I suggest is when you go home tonight, take out a little post-it like this and write down the words grow and give on that post-it. And put it on the mirror where you brush your teeth tonight and uh, ask yourself, you know, before you go to bed, and uh, how are you gonna grow and give tomorrow? And when you get up in the morning tomorrow, you look at that post and say, 
set an intention in the morning. How am I going to grow and how am I going to give today? And then when you go to bed at night, ask yourself, how did I do? Hold yourself accountable. I guarantee you at the end of five days, you will totally understand the power of purpose and the power of being a caring person because it's a practice. Caring is a verb, not just a concept. So I uh, want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for the honor of being here at the 30th anniversary and uh, to Danica and to Michelle and to uh, Jane and Mike and the extended Larson family. It's been a real privilege, obviously knowing your folks, but knowing you as well. So thank you very much and I'll turn it back to you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm already thinking about that post-it that I'm going to put up tonight. We've gotten off to a great start. Now I want to let you know that we're so happy to have Leah McLean as our MC tonight. If any of you have turned on the TV news in the last 15 years, you've been lucky enough to see Leah, where she's worked as a producer, reporter, and anchor with Five Eyewitness News. It's easy to see Leah's delightful enthusiasm and infectious smile as she speaks with grace and compassion toward her viewers. Leah loves being a part of KSTP because her job allows her to stay connected in a special way with her community. Leah grew up here in Minneapolis and she went to Minnehaha Academy in St. Thomas University. She now has two young girls, Grace who's six and Eloise who's five. And she tells me that the girls would love to have a dog, but Leah herself isn't quite ready for that responsibility. <laughs> And then when I asked Leah about her hobbies, she instantly replied that she used to have hobbies before she had kids, but now she does whatever they want to do. They do like to bike together and garden. And now here's why we're really excited to have Leah leading the way tonight. Leah grew up with my cousin Kristen, who's also Raleigh and Doris's granddaughter. So Leah has actually known my grandparents ever since she was in third grade. And Kristen said that growing up, Leah was never shy and had no problem chatting with our grandparents. They sure were fans of Leah's and they always asked about her through the years to see how she was doing. And they were so proud of her when she became a news anchor and they became very faithful in watching her deliver the news. Kristen's mom, Jane, describes Leah as a kind, fun, honest, lovely, encouraging, gracious, down-to-earth woman with a deep faith and a great sense of humor. Jane also said, Leah is so caring, positive, and inquisitive. In fact, growing up, she didn't seem to be afraid to go look in our refrigerator to see if there was any pie left. <laughs> Leah, thank you for being here. We are truly delighted to have your bright light shining in the room. So, Leah McLean. Pie or cookies? I don't know if anyone uh, has ever had Jane Whipp's famous chocolate chip cookies. She squishes them. I always say they look like those little, you know those dogs, the squish faces. They, if you ever have a chance to have her cookies, they're amazing. Thank you so much. Um, well, Richard, that was wonderful. I, I'm writing the post-it. I've got to find a place to put it because I have those little girls who run my world. So they would take it down. They post post-its all the time. Um, and Michelle, thank you. That's really sweet. I'm just so honored to be here. Um, as we have heard, uh, Raleigh and Doris meant so much to so many of us. I know some of you probably never met them, but I hope that if you met them or you didn't, uh, well, I'll tell you this. They're the kind of people who just being in their presence made you feel special. They, they just had a way of making you comfortable, making you just feel loved in their compassion they just exuded. Their children have that, their grandchildren have that. I'm just, it's a wonderful family. But it made me think of honoring the youth today and how important it is to have these incredible young people have a chance to be recognized and to know for all the grown-ups who are here how important you are in these young lives. I really think that, that as a young person, trying to build your confidence, figure out what you're doing in life, having some support from an adult in your life is, is important. And those of you who are here who are honoring those young people, 
I just think you've really touched their lives in an important way, whether you're parents or coaches or just someone else in these young people's lives. I just think you don't get to, to be a caring youth without a little bit of support. I hope my little girls who are five and six years old can someday accomplish some of the things that the young people here have, which I'm very excited to get to. So um, I'm gonna share a little bit about the format. I think those of you who are coming up on stage may have already heard some of this, but um, the adult who's recognizing you will come up with you, and then this, make note of this, folks, I've got a couple chairs over here. So when the person who's coming up before you is up, kind of work your way over here and be on standby. Um, then you'll come up here, and your awards are over here on this side. So we'll kind of work our way along this side. And I'm really excited to hear all the stories about what the young people here have accomplished. So we might as well jump right into it, okay? Um, our first, or wait, any other things? Oh, by the way, dessert and coffee still here. Feel free to grab some after we're going. Uh, anything else I need to be announcing? Okay, good. Uh, okay, our first group. Um, Perspectives is here to honor Berea Cassidy. So come on down. So we are actually from Groves Academy, but that's okay, Leo. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, that's okay. uh, my name is Rachel Erickson. I'm an upper school teacher at Groves Academy, and I am excited to recognize Maria Cassidy. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Day in and day out, Maria exemplifies this change. She always has a kind word for others, a smile on her face, and a positive attitude about anything we do in the classroom, school events, and working with her peers. She goes above and beyond in her kindness and patience. Maria is the classmate that everyone wants to work with because of her gentle demeanor, strong work ethic, and empathetic nature. Maria's friends describe her as supportive, understanding, upbeat all the time, always there for us no matter what, and if she were to be an animal, her, she would be, of course, a magical unicorn. <laughs> Maria consistently demonstrates her caring nature in the classroom and in her extracurricular activities. She's a leader in the Groves Theater Department, student council, and on Spirit Squad. She makes all of her peers feel welcome. She leads by example, and she puts in the hard work necessary for all of these activities to be successful. As a youth snowboard instructor in the winter and a teacher assistant in our summer school program, she serves as a positive and encouraging role model for younger students. One of the core values we embrace at Groves Academy and work to instill in all of our students is compassion. Maria embraces this daily. She doesn't seek accolades or praise. This is just who she is. She is caring and compassionate at her core. There isn't just one story that uh, made Maria our caring youth honoree. Her story plays out every day in her consistent kindness to everyone. Her compassion creates a positive school culture, and we are so fortunate to have her in our school community as she truly makes Groves Academy a better place. Thank you, Maria. Congratulations. Congratulations. We have the Girl Scouts here now to honor Jacqueline Dempsey-Sack. Hi, I'm Kelly Christensen from the Girl St. Louis Park Girl Scouts, and I'm here to recognize, recognize JC. Uh, when JC first joined Girl Scouts years ago, she immediately stood out for, because of her bright smile. There hasn't been a time since her kindergarten year as a daisy that I've seen her without it. <laughs> While interacting with others, she's always been fully engaged and welcoming. Her positivity is contagious. The younger Scouts approach her without reservation, 
and look up to her as a role model. She truly delivers on a Girl Scout promise that all Girl Scouts make to live by the Girl Scout law, which includes being friendly and helpful, considerate and caring. JC shares her community, she cares about her community through STEP and through her faith community. She's a, um, she's contrib this wasn't in here, so I'm just ad-libbing at this part. She's in band at school, she plays for her church, and she's also on the, uh, what are you on for band? Band. band council, sorry, it didn't make the cut, so I'm just letting you all know. She's very busy and she's very involved. Uh, being an exceptional leader is how she contributes to both the service unit and the community. She volunteers at the local summer day camps where if she is a favorite fun caddy, the girls call Bucky. She's hosted many events with her troop, 14177, such as International Tea, which is where we celebrate girls from around the globe. JC also worked with the city to bring the very popular Gaga Ball to the middle school kids so they can have access to a local and free activity. One thing that stands out is her ability to maintain fun and positivity while working the Girl Scout events. I have my own troop, and sometimes the looks on the faces that I get are not fun and positive. <laughs> JC is always that girl, so it's very nice. One thing she does is she's someone you want on your team and in your corner. She will lift you up. She's a positive role model for girls. She's a leader, and Girl Scouts is honored to have her representing the organization. But it's not the only organization that JC is part of. Her and her family are committed to St. Baldrick's Foundation to help fight and raise money for childhood cancer. JC and her brother are on team Adrian's Bald Beauties and Beasties, where annually they shave their heads to raise money for awareness in honor of their friend, Adrian Mitchell Merrifield, <laughs> who passed away in 2014. JC's mom captured this year's hair shave on video and and shared it with those of us on Facebook. Her and her brother had a good time. They were laughing, there was positivity. In a moment where you would think would be somber, they somehow made it seem like they were having the best time ever. In a time in life where outward appearances are very important to kids, and most kids are looking to not stand out, JC saw another cause, and it was someone else. She's out making a difference for something that matters to her, and naturally she was doing it with a smile on her face. Thank you, JC. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We now have the St. Louis Park Library here and Hilda Habia, and we are also honoring uh, Marta, Marta Hill, who unfortunately can't be here tonight. Hi, I'm Jane, I'm from the St. Louis Park Library, and I'm here to recognize Hilda and Marta, who is unable to join us tonight. Marta and Hilda are teen volunteers at the St. Louis Park Library. Last summer, we asked the two of them to take on a special weekly project of designing and implementing STEM pop-up programming for young children. The two of them met and chose STEM-related activities and experiments for each Thursday morning of the summer. They gave me a list of supplies and then off they went. Each Thursday morning they showed up with smiles on their faces and an eagerness to get going with their projects. They led all sorts of experiments and projects with kids such as making marshmallow slingshots, straw rockets, and slime. The families with young children who come to the library looked forward to the weekly outdoor activities with Marta and Hilda. Marta and Hilda's enthusiasm, initiative, and caring led to many happy library kids who adored Marta and Hilda for their warmth and their kindness. They were both responsible, reliable, and communicative, and it was so fun to have them around. Hilda and, Hilda and Marta showed a real sense of caring about their community and wanting to make it better, which they did. They made sure everyone who came to the library felt welcome, which fosters such a great sense of community. We loved having Marta and Hilda be a regular part of the library crew at St. Louis Park Library last summer, and I'm so pleased to honor them with a Caring Youth Award, which they both very much deserve. Congratulations, Marta and Hilda. Ladies. 
the St. Louis Park Parktacular Ambassadors are up next to honor Alexandra Hogue. Hello, my name is Tammy McKenna. I'm one of the co-directors of the St. Louis Park Parktacular Ambassador Program, and I'm here to recognize Alexandra. Alex has been a committed, caring, and vibrant individual in our program since she was selected in June of last year. She has been a role model for our younger ambassadors and treats all of them like her sisters. Alexandra's smile and great attitude at all of our events make her a key reason why our group has blended so well this year. Alexandra is quick to assist others when they need help, and she has jumped in to any project with a smile and enthusiasm. The choice was an obvious one for all of us directors. Our group helps out at many activities within St. Louis Park, and we never know what we're going to get and we never know exactly what will happen. But Alexander has been a key, especially for me, knowing that I can say, Alex, can you help me with the younger ones? And she is always quick to grab a hand and say, okay, let's go everyone. Our program has never selected a middle school student before for this award, but yet Alexander has stood out and was the logical choice because of her kind and thoughtful disposition, her eagerness to help everyone, and being such a great role model for our other ambassadors. She has truly blossomed this year, and we are so grateful for her and her family within our program and all that they have done. Thank you, Alexandra, and congratulations. ladies. Now we have perspectives for real this time. All right. And Wes Kirchner. Hi, I'm Chef Dan, or Dan Tobias Kodak from Perspectives, and I'm here to recognize Wes Kirchner. Wes started as a volunteer with our organization at the beginning of the school year for his in-service learning project. He has been one of the few volunteers that has continued after his obligation has ended. It is apparent that he cares about his volunteering and enjoys his time at Perspectives. Not all volunteers want to be challenged and ask for extra duties, but from day one, Wes set out what he could do to contribute. Wes has not only been a strong volunteer for our program, but he is also someone who the children seek out. It has been fortuitous it's right there. Okay. For both the children and me, that Wes has a passion for cooking. The kids he works with in the kitchen know that he enjoys this, and they like to share their skills and their love of being in Kids Cafe with him. He has always been one to seek out extra tasks for the day to see if anything else needs to be accomplished, whether it is organizing, cleaning, or any extra prep work. Wes has also been a very good role model for his fellow students from Benild when they need help to know what to do. I have noticed the other students taking cues from him as to how to proceed with their day. It is, it is his leading by example and his friendliness that makes me honored to recognize him with this award. Congratulations, Wes. guys. And now Benilde St. Margaret's is here with Grace Ann Knorr. Hello, my name is Leah Clister and I am an art teacher and theology teacher at Benilde St. Margaret's and I'm here to recognize Grace Knorr. Grace is currently in my theology class called Faith in Action. The main focus of this class is for students to find an issue that they are passionate about and find out what advocacy work is needed in that area. Grace is one of my students who is passionate about climate change, specifically with lessening the use of plastic. I haven't even taught her for a full semester, and yet she has still made such an impression on me. Grace deeply cares and lives with an attitude of, well, why wouldn't I help? Mm -hmm. I don't often see this quality in teenagers, and actually not many adults have this quality in spades either. 
She and the other honoree that I'm recognizing, Riley, are currently working with the Loop Restaurant at the West End and at Benelde St. Margaret's, the uh, food company, Taher, encouraging them towards moving to using less plastic. They have encouraged them to eliminate plastic straws and start using compostable ones. The students at BSM see how their classmates, Grace and Riley, have made this change in their own community and the greater St. Louis Park community. Hopefully, hopefully, other students will see that change can happen. It may start small, but it can grow. Some of B Grace's best qualities are balance and openness. What I mean by balance is that Grace listens before, she, before and after she talks, and she seems to check a situation before she acts. Grace's balance is maintained by her willingness and open-mindedness to listen to all people. She changes her thoughts or opinions if she learns something new. Much like her name, she is gracious in all situations. Everyone feels at ease around her, not because she allows people to do or say whatever they want, but because she's found a way to do what is best and kindness for others in a way that is easy for others to accept. It's magic. Perhaps it's because Grace doesn't seem to judge herself, so everyone else feels at ease. Others don't feel judged by her then either. She is herself completely, and it allows others to be themselves too. Thank you and congratulations, Grace. Oh, that's very beautiful. Thanks, ladies. And now, Westwood Lutheran Church here, representing Jade Cohen. Good evening. My name is Becca Angstrand, and I have the privilege of nominating Jade Conan as a caring youth. Jade is a constant in our Westwood community. She's one of the rare people in our world who listens more than she talks. She never fails to say yes in helping in a variety of roles in our children, youth, and family ministry programming at Westwood. It is not the fact that she says yes that we are nominating her today, though in a job where we depend on volunteers so much, a yes is really important. But rather, we eagerly nominate her because of what accompanies a yes from Jade. Her yeses come with a helpful, committed, and willing heart that has a natural talent for finding opportunities to improve upon programming and operates with expert execution. Jade is a great listener and a servant leader in our community quietly acting and constantly bettering wherever she is serving with innovative and well thought out ideas and commitments to her tasks. Recently at a large family party we had, she was our photo booth photographer. All the photos included thoughtful angles, added props and families with big smiles. And we, we attribute that to you, Jade. She even took it upon herself to document the event with photos of other activities during the evening while there were breaks of families visiting the photo booth. No one asked her to do that, that's just Jade. At Messy Worship, which is our family-focused worship service, she is committed to precisely timing our PowerPoint slides um, to the pastor's message and improves interactive prayers by thinking ahead and tweaking the process to make sure things go smoothly for all participants. Just a few weeks ago, she learned of a volunteer job happening in our basement and raced down to lend a helping hand. It's been her tradition to volunteer with this specific project for the past four years, going above and beyond offering her time and talents to a project that's for preschoolers that she would otherwise have nothing to be in, to do with, except that she's made volunteering for this particular project a tr yearly tradition of hers. That's just the kind of person Jade is. She lends a hand and gives her whole heart. She's dependable, helpful, and thoughtful, and takes her commitments seriously and maturely thinks through her actions. She improves even the smallest of tax, tasks when she says yes. Jade is a gift to Westwood, and she will be a gift wherever she next lends a hand. Thank you, Jade, and congratulations. I'm loving hearing all your stories, by the way. These are really wonderful. Um, all right, Westwood Lutheran Church is up again, this time with Olivia Mosby.
Hi, I'm Jen Moore, and I'm here on behalf of Westwood Lutheran Church, and we're here to recognize Olivia Mosby. Olivia has a deep sense of caring for her peers, her church community, and the world. She connects with people as they are and is not afraid to lift up big questions on how to live out faith and action in the real world. She has a deep sense of spirituality and is a committed and caring member of her church and her family. Olivia is quick to offer a smile or a listening ear. She is the first to step up to a task, even if it's not her favorite thing. Simply, Olivia is a light and an old soul who makes caring for others a common practice in her life. Olivia is a leader and a role model in our church. She reaches out to offer help wherever she sees an opportunity. This includes her leadership in our children's programming on Sundays. Olivia's study disposition is helpful in large elementary aged groups. She is confident and comfortable approaching kids when they need help, redirection, or someone to listen to them. <laughs> Olivia is a rare youth who can channel the energy of a fifth grade chatty boy to participate in a group sing-along with minimal eye rolling. <laughs> the kids recognize her and trust that she's there for them. When the congregation watches a storytelling video in worship, Olivia is often one of the young actors in the screen telling us the story. She is not afraid to be seen or heard if it's helpful to our Westwood community. Olivia holds herself to a very high standard and expects the same from those she's in relationship with. Whether it is in conversation with her peers in youth group, on a youth trip, or as a frequent volunteer with our children, Olivia cares deeply and gives generously. Olivia exudes respect. She always shows it, finds the best way to express it to others, and guides her peers and our children towards better ways to reflect it. Olivia jumped into Westwood with both feet and a firm commitment. She's a vital member of our community. She participates in countless ways that help Westwood thrive, and she's risen into leadership by committing herself by bettering this community. We're grateful for the care and leadership Olivia provides to the people of all ages at Westwood. Thank you, and congratulations, Olivia. Congratulations. Our friends from Vanille St. Margaret's are back with Riley James Norman. Hello, my name is still Leah. Um, <laughs> but I'm up here to recognize Riley Norman. Um, Riley is also in my Faith in Action class and uh, Riley and Grace are partners on a project. Uh, in class, in addition to the advocacy project that they're working on, we spend a lot of time talking about current global issues. We cover a lot, anything from climate change and mass incarceration to femicide and the living wage. The kindness and compassion that Riley seems to have for everything is apparent in the way that he participates in class discussions. He also, like Grace, has the attitude of, well, why wouldn't I help? A rarity, as I mentioned before, in teenagers, but in many people. This also applies to the project that they are doing with eliminating plastic straws, but it goes far beyond that. I have only had him as well for one semester, although I did have him in seventh grade, um, but I have found that this caring and cash compassion is his default. As I mentioned, Riley and Grace have greatly impacted a few different places. The Loop Restaurant, in which has five different locations, and also the BSM community through their care for the environment and trying to eliminate plastic. Even though the Loop is not positive that they can afford to switch completely to com compostable straws, they have since started handing out straws only when pa patrons ask. Excuse me. A wonderful change initiated by two teenagers. One of Riley's best qualities is his insatiable curiosity. He asks such good questions. Riley wants to know all sides of an issue, the good, the bad, and the ugly, before he settles on the most compassionate way to understand something. 
I could see how Riley could come across as a skeptic, but it's only because he doesn't shy away from asking hard and smart questions in the search to find a better solution. After getting to know Riley, you'll find out it is not skepticism. It's that he wants to find the best way to solve the problem and help the most people affected by that issue. His questions are deeply rooted in his commitment to being the best person he can be and offering himself as a steward of the earth. Thank you and congratulations, Riley. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. All right, the police officers are going to join us now. St. Louis Park Police Explorers are here with Isela Perez Cuajo. Hi, I'm Officer Huddle with the St. Louis Park Police Department, and I'm uh, happy to be here to recognize Isela Perez Cuajo. I don't know how she did it on her first try. <laughs> <laughs> Took me like a week to learn that. Uh, Isela is a dedicated member of our Police Explorer program. Each and every week she brings a high positive energy and a strong sense of leadership. Isela continually tries to make others around her better. Isela is always the first to volunteer and never misses an opportunity when it's presented to her. Isela displays a spirit of caring each and every day and I couldn't think of a better youth to honor. Isela has been with our program for almost two years now and in that time she has had a great impact. Her infectious smile energy, and leadership quickly brightens others around her every day. Not only have I watched Isela grow the last two years, I've also seen her spread her caring for others to her other peers and help them grow as individuals. Isela is always looking for ways to make our community better and her peers and never looks for recognition. Isela is a true role model to all of our youth in our community. Recently, I learned of a story where Isela portrayed her spirit of caring and concern for others. Isela was watching a video live on Instagram of another female student. The student is severely disabled <clears throat> and is easily taken advantage of by her classmates because she does not understand social interaction. While Isela was watching the video, she observed other students doing inappropriate things and making fun of the other student. Isela decided to take action, and because Isela decided to take action and stand up for another, she hopefully helped stop the inappropriate behavior and harassment against the student. And this is just one of many stories, and now I'm going to improv a little bit. I actually just spent the weekend uh, down with uh, 550 youth in Rochester for the Police Explorer programs when we got back yesterday. And uh, our community has some of the best youth individuals, and Isela is a leader of them. And I'm just proud to uh, be her leader each and every day. So congratulations, Isela. Congratulations. All right, Groves Academy is here with uh, a story about Jacob Peterson. <laughs> Hello. My name is Julie Daly, and I am a teacher at Groves Academy, and I'm honored to celebrate Groves Academy student Jacob Peterson. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? That was said by Martin Luther King. At Groves Academy and on the local ski slopes, junior Jacob Peterson, goes by JP, answers the question posed by Dr. King. Since December, Jacob has served as a role model for a young fifth grade student who is struggling to make sound social choices. When our school counselor asked JP to serve as his mentor, he agreed enthusiastically. Jacob makes it a point to be timely in picking up this student from class, returning him to class energized, encouraged, and refocused. Jacob plays games and exercises with his mentee, but more than that, they have a, an engaged conversation in positive, excuse me, a positive conversation that is encouraging good sportsmanship, hard work, and perseverance. For example, one day, 
this young student was talking about how, how transitions are hard for him. And JP related the situation back to his own life in a way that was both positive and reassuring. Thanks to JP, this younger student has something to truly look forward to each week. On the ski slopes, Jacob has just recently award, been awarded the Volunteer of the Year for his work with the Courage Kinney Ski Program at Afton Alps. He was selected for his ability to connect with younger students just as he does at Groves. Older ski instructors remarked he has that knack for knowing when to encourage and push and when to take a break and rest. As a leader on the trap team, JP is constantly encouraging peers to give the sport a try while motivating and caring about his team members to give it their best at practices. I have a feeling Jacob will be answering King's call to service throughout his life. I've gotten to know JP as a visitor, regular visitor, to my advisory. He brings a fun energy. He probably wouldn't want me to mention his love of flowery language like a lot of teenage boys, but he has a great sense of humor and brings fun stories and levity to a lot of situations. With great pride, please help me to recognize Jacob Peterson as we celebrate his daily acts of kindness and service to others. And one more thing, JP, I caught, I caught the groundhog. <laughs> Congratulations. And now Ahuva Roberts is going to be honored by Bias Yaakov. Hi, I'm Bella Smith from Bayes Yaakov High School, and I'm here to recognize Ahuva Roberts. There are those who volunteer to do for others when asked. And then there are those special, unique individuals who look for opportunities, who anticipate what others need, and then do what needs to be done. A Hoover Roberts is one such special individual. She is a senior at Base Yaakov High School of St. Louis Park. Her volunteer work is done with a positive attitude, and she's all and always with she's humble and unassuming. For the past four years, Ahuva, on a weekly basis, has gone to help a family with a number of young children to help the mother give her a break when uh, that she, that's well needed. She plays with the children, she reads to them, and takes them out to play. When a couple in the community has a baby, Ahuva is happily available to step in, take care of their other children, even sleeping over if necessary. She always does it with a big smile and such a positive, sweet attitude like it's no big deal. In addition, Ahuva volunteers for an organization called Bikur Kolim, which prepares special meals for patients coming to Minneapolis from out of town for medical treatment. On a regular basis, she shops, she helps cook, and she delivers meals to those in need or those who have trouble getting out. Ahuva is our honoree because of her sensitivity to others and her innate sense of seeing what others need and then doing something to help them. Ahuva has impacted a wide spectrum of people of different ages and in different ways. She makes the world and her community a kinder, better place. She's a terrific role model for others. Recently, Ahuva heard that a fellow student in her school was having some challenges and was not coming to school on a regular basis. Ahuva stepped up and decided to help by offering to pick up this girl every morning and then take her home every afternoon whenever she needed a ride. Ahuva saw the need and took it upon herself to help. Ahuva senses others' needs, offers a kind word, or helps in other and helps others in unique and caring ways. It's my pleasure to honor Ahuva Roberts. Thank you. We have one more young person now. Brianna Seaman is being honored by the Ridgedale YMCA. I'm 
so glad we moved this microphone down already. It's perfect. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Emily Wald. I'm from the Ridgedale YMCA, and I'm here to honor Bree Seaman. Bree is an excellent young woman and has come so far from when I met her in an outreach program at the YMCA just a few years ago. When Bree came to the YMCA a few years ago, uh, she began to channel her energy into helping making service projects happen, which was actually my first um, official group working with the Y, and it's extremely memorable in my mind. Um, she agreed to come out that summer, actually, as well, and volunteered our day camp, and she tried out the Leaders in Training Camp. After completing the camp and serving for 40 hours, Bree decided to dedicate even more time volunteering the next summer for 200 hours. Bree serves with uncom an uncommon amount of compassion and gives selflessly. She thinks about others before herself. We love having her out at camp. Bree has impacted 72 campers and countless staff in her time with Day Camp Christmas Tree. All of those campers experienced Bree's fun personality and how helpful and caring and what a good listener she is. When I first met Bree in my YSTAR program that I mentioned before, uh, she had a hard time focusing with all of her energy. She just had so much of it, and she'd be sitting down all day. And um, we noticed she liked to move around and do a lot of things, so we gave her um, all kinds of things to do, and one of those things was our service project idea. And when the topic of service projects came up, uh, she's our fiercest advocate for um, all these different ideas and serving more. Um, every single day she'd come in with more ideas or places that she wanted to visit. And every day we had that program, she would ask about the progress of our current projects and if we could do anything more um, with all the ideas she had to serve. She's extremely caring and highly motivated um, and a passionate individual. Thank you so much, Bree, and congratulations. What an incredible group of young people. Hold on, there's not more, are there? We got everybody. We have a, that, I hope you're all as impressed as I am to hear about all the things that the people in this room are doing to help others around them, to listen to what needs to be done, to take action, and to make change in their community. Thank you for what you do. As a resident of St. Louis Park, I'm really glad to know that there are so many great people living here and making a difference, and all the adults supporting these young people too. Thank you all, thank you for letting me be part of this. Uh, Danica has a few announcements for us, thanks. Thank you, Leah, and thanks to all of you who had amazing things, and I know that uh, I scrunched some of your scripts. <laughs> Because you all had such lovely and wonderful litanies to tell about these amazing young people. Um, I'm going to close, but before I do that, I want to make sure that while you're still listening, uh, we're going to gather for a group picture, um, maybe right over here, right after. So all the honorees, hightail it over that way when I say I'm done. Okay? <laughs> uh Wow, is the only word that I could think of sitting over here. Um, our young people are so remarkable. Um, but as Richard mentioned, uh, maybe Leah, someone lovely mentioned <laughs> earlier <laughs> uh, that caring kids have gifts, but they're supported by caring adults. So um, we've spent our time recognizing these young people. Um, I also want to say a huge thank you to all of the adults who not only see these kids as gifts, but celebrate them and lift them up. So let's, uh, youth, let's acknowledge the adults in your life. Mayor Jake Spano was unable to be here tonight, but I'd like to deliver uh, a message on his behalf. So, pretend I'm bald and taller. <laughs> he's bald, right? Okay. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like, oh, maybe he's not. Okay. Here we go. To all of you attending tonight, I'm sorry I cannot be with you. However, Monday is city council night, and since you all pay my salary, I didn't think you'd want me skipping work. Let me start by thanking all the honorees here tonight. Your work as volunteers, 
mentors, and community leaders is greatly needed, not only in St. Louis Park, but throughout the world. When I had an oppor opportunity to read the speeches by those nominating tonight's honorees, I saw words like duty, commitment, selflessness, compassion, courage, and humility. But I also saw words like passion, enthusiasm, and fun. The last one is especially important because so often we're passionate about the work we're engaged in. It can seem uh, we're so often, I'm sorry, Jake. Let me start over. <laughs> the last one is especially important because so often we are passionate about the work we're engaged in. It can seem like all the world rises and falls on the success and failure of our work. The reality is not everything can be brain surgery. Find ways to make your efforts fun and they'll never feel like an obligation. They'll feel like an opportunity. In closing, please know that when I travel the country and speak at conferences, people always ask me about our town. And I'm often following someone who has a well-known landmark or a famous company in their town. Sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> um, that exports products around the world. When it comes around to me, I tell them that St. Louis Park is not home to any monuments or Fortune 500 companies with global products. I tell them, though, that the people are our most valuable export to the world. People like Thomas Friedman and the Cohen brothers, Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, and people like all of you gathered here this evening. You're the greatest contribution to St. Louis that St. Louis Park can make to the world, and I, for one, I'm so proud of all of you and look forward to great things from you. I believe in you. Sincerely, Mayor Jake Spano. Toward the end of his life, Raleigh tacked a handwritten note to his bulletin board with, an import, with important thoughts to keep in mind. He t entitled it, Reminders for Today. It included things like, decide to be happy and try to make a difference in someone's life. The family was so moved to see this in his hospice room. The framed piece that each of you have received tonight is an excerpt from this personal note. And, sh and shared, we shared it with you in hopes that these will be wonderful reminders for you going forward and a wonderful reminder of what has been celebrated this evening. In my work with youth over the years, people have often said to me, our future is in great hands. And because I can't help myself, I respond, actually, youth are leading us now. Youth are teaching us now. Youth are standing up, standing with, and standing up for and standing for causes, people, and the world now. Youth are not our future leaders. Youth are leading us into the future. And it's this event, sorry, <laughs> it's this event that reminds me just how grateful I am to be led by young people who show us that what matters most is not getting ahead, not gaining power or looking out for ourselves, but rather compassion, kindness, and a spirit of caring that make for a better world. Thank you for joining us for the 30th annual Caring Youth event. We're so grateful you've been here tonight, and we hope that you leave uh, uplifted and also encouraged that our youth are leading us into the future. Thank you. There's more dessert. Please eat it. It's paid for. <laughs>